Okay, so now let's learn about promises. Um, so to introduce promises, I'm going to start with this example, right? Okay, I'm going to explain it. So um, in, um, let me see if I can explain this in easy way. So th the idea here is that you know, as you've seen, we, we created a lambda, and whenever you call it, it has no parameters, right? So in this case, um, if you call the same function and uh, multiple times, this function doesn't have parameters. If it doesn't have parameters, nor side effects. So perhaps um, it's kind of silly to call the function multiple times, right? So let's say, let me show you a simple example, just to kind of motivate what I mean. So let's say I have a function uh, where a thunk, right, where I return 10, right? So I define, define 10, right? So if I uh, call, oops, so if I call 10, I should get the result of 10, right? I should get the number 10 out. Let me comment this out. By now you've, you're convinced that this works. Okay, so if I do requires rack unit, then I do check equal 10, right? Uh, and of course, it might not surprise you if I call this function again, I should also get 10, right? So I get the same value twice. Um, however, um, if I call it uh, but in this case, it's just an, a value, right, that is being returned. So that's kind of silly, like the, there's not much happening. But imagine that instead of, um, instead of, of a function that just returns a value, it could be a function that is performing some really heavy computation that takes a while, right? So in this case, um, I wrote sleep one that will sleep for one second. Uh, and it's going to display... A little star in the screen uh, just so you know that it's doing something um, so when I run it if I call this function 10, ten uh, three times it's gonna wait one second per call right because whenever I call the function it's gonna execute again so if it's executing again and it has to think for a second and then it prints out something you're gonna see it happening three times so in many cases, it doesn't really make sense to be executing the same function multiple times if the result is always the same, right? So if, if the function, you know, it's not reading from a file, there's no other side effect happening, um, then why would you need to run that function all the time? If you could just store the result and run it multiple times and always you always get the same result, why not cache that result, right? So... What we're going to study in this in this video is really a technique to cache this result of a function that always you're you're not expecting it to be. You're, it's not that you're not expecting it cannot be cannot have side effects. It cannot read from a file or from the network or something else. So it's something that whenever you call it, it should always return the same value. So like this function that always returns ten, right? So now the problem is how do we how do we um, kind of make this a bit more performant? So for the sake of discussion, I have this example where we have a function called runner that has a number, uh, and then it has a thunk given as a parameter, um, and then it has some callback, some continuation, it's gonna run, do whatever it wants. So what the function runner is doing is if the value is smaller or equal than zero, then you're gonna call the callback once. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to call the callback at all, the, the thunk. So you, regardless of what you're going to do, you're going to call the callback. But what is happening here, the difference is really whether you're calling thunk or you're going to return. So actually, we could kind of even simplify this and say that we want the results to be this. Uh, and then what we do with the result, see if the parentheses are right make things a bit more obvious is
call the result. So if the count is smaller than zero, you call the thunk. Otherwise, you just call count. Okay, so if I run this, uh, let's see if I didn't. This is fine. Okay, so I have some result, and then according to to this count, I will execute the thunk or not. Okay, so this is basically what's happening. Okay, see so here I'm running the three times, and it's kind of silly to run it multiple times. So now the question is, how do I cache the result? Okay. Um, so what we so Racket offers this way of delaying an evaluation, and then when you call force, you call the evaluate, you execute the evaluation, and you get the return. And if you call force again, you are using the last result. So if you call force at least once, it will run. Um, and if you call force n times, you will always get the same result, which is the result of the first time it was executed. Okay. So in this example, if instead of delay, I call this a promise, okay, instead of uh, calling it, I call force. Here's what happens. Uh, delay not uh, instead of promises delay delay. I see one star only, although the value was counted three times. So if I call eleven here, we will note that it will return an exception, right? So it, it did get a ten, right? But I only got one star, which means this display was only invoked once, which means when you call force, it executes the thing, your function at at most once. At most once, this is very important, okay. So delay of E is delaying the, the evaluation of this expression. What it delays, what it returns is a promise, okay, so not a thunk. Um, and when you call force, it evaluates E and gets the result and stores it somewhere such that whenever you call force again, you get that result back. So this technique is known as memoization and it's an optimization technique um, that is that represents this idea. Um, for instance, not all programming languages expect eager evaluation, such as what we've seen here in, in Racket, but also what is commonplace in JavaScript, Python, and C. Uh, some other languages actually employ a different way of thinking about evaluation, where um, evaluation only happens by need. So that's, everything is lazily evaluated. So the only way to compute something is if you want to send it to the outside world, then that whole expression is executed. So everything is executed by demand, where you have to really think about things a bit differently, especially can be tricky with side effects. So Haskell actually provides language features to kind of uh, ameliorate that. So if you, this idea of caching results can be quite powerful. And indeed is the, the, the backbone of the idea known as future, where you think when, whenever you delay a, an expression being computed, you actually delay it by running it in a different thread. Okay, so a parallel future has this idea. And uh, it's a, a very, um, simple and efficient way of thinking about um, ways to parallelize code. Really what you think about is whenever you call a function, let's say you could think of it as calling it in a delayed fashion, and then you get the value that is a, a pointer to the actual result, right? This force here. And when you call force, what you do is we, you wait for that other thread that is running in another processor to terminate and when finally it decides to do so you just copy the result back. The idea of promises is also prevalent in um, asynchronous network code and UI. So JavaScript and Python use a lot um, the idea of promises either directly or indirectly. 
Okay, so finally, let's look at an example uh, of um, an example of two things using uh, thunk and promises. Right, which is uh, promise repeat and thunk repeat. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, it's the same example as I had before, that I showed you before, uh, but this is just generalizing uh, the idea to kind of have a function that runs a thunk n times. And basically what I want to show you guys, if, if I run, if I call a thunk three times, it's going to display um, It's going to display three stars, right? Uh, whereas if you do it with a um, wait a second, so promise I'm going to use a P, and the thunk I'm going to use a T, and now if I run this, display. Okay, I have to write. Display. Right. Okay. So now I should see three T's and one, one P. Okay. Okay. So the idea here is just I, I, I created a function that runs a thunk n times. Here it is. And then a, a function that runs a promise, calls a force on a promise n times. And then what I did was I called a thunk that prints T. Um, three times and then did the same for promise prints p three times and what i saw was that uh, because a force is caching the result you only see one p but you see three tongues okay um yeah and this is basically it uh, the idea behind uh, promises and tongues they they can be used to represent the same thing the only nuance is that tongues cache the result um, and they are, in fact, different things, right? So uh, a promise is really uh, this data structure, special data structure, where a thunk is just a plain old uh, function declaration. It's just a function with zero arguments. In the next video, we're going to see how we could implement promises.